there was one day when we finished, I had been out on a mission for, I was under six weeks. And so we had an extra hour of study. And I remember during that extra hour of study, it started raining. And little did I know, I, I came to find out a couple couple days later or later that night that it was actually a hurricane. And, <laughs> and so, you know, we kept on studying and then we're like, well, if this thing's going to keep going, we're going to have to go out and um, tracked in this, in this hurricane. But we, we like waited and like no call. And so, you know, we finished eating lunch. So like, okay, hey, let's go out. So I remember my companion grabbed his umbrella and like walked outside and, and like already he was wet. So he just like folded up the umbrella and like put it inside. And <laughs> we got on our bikes and then we turned around after about five feet and put them back. And we're like, we're just going to walk. Um, but there was like a river like coming down the street. There were people like walking through like a foot of water. Like this old lady was just like stretching up the street and this like water, like it was, it was crazy. It was raining. I've never seen it rain so hard in my entire life. It was a small tropical storm, but it was apparently we were like right in the heart of it. Um, it didn't just, it didn't do any damage. It just, it just rained and rained and rained. Um, <laughs> everyone was safe. There's no one that got injured, but I just remember seeing so much water and just so much flooding everywhere. In my very first area, we baptized someone the first weekend that I was there, and he'd been taught by missionaries for a long time. Um, this man was a professional rapper, and he loved to drink and smoke, but the missionaries gave him a Book of Mormon, and he, they promised him that if he read it, that he'd be able to give up those addictions. And so Gabriel was his name. He gave up those addictions to drink and smoke, and he was baptized. And we had the opportunity to share the gospel to his family. Now his sister and his parents weren't interested, but his sister's daughters were. And so, you know, some of my first lessons in the mission were to, to three little girls who wanted to know the gospel, was if, to, to want to know more about Christ and more about God. And instantly they knew it was true. And it got to the point where we teach them lessons and then we have them teach it back to us. And it was a really, really cool experience. And so I taught them, you know, my whole first area, but their mom wouldn't let them get baptized. Um, we set a date for him to get baptized, and then the day of, or the day before, we came over to give them their baptism whites and have their baptism interview. And the grandpa came to the door and said, no, they're not getting baptized, and they're never going to join the church, and you're not allowed to come onto our property anymore. And I remember, you know, having these three girls who knew that it was true, and they were just in tears. And it was it was one of the hardest experiences of my mission up to that point, you know, only being out for six weeks or a couple of transfers. And I just remember going and just crying. And it was, it was a really hard experience for me to see someone who knew it was true, but they couldn't progress because of their parents were stopping them. Fortunately, the story doesn't end there. Um, I, the day I was transferred out of that area, I went to visit the family. And I remember confront, going and knocking on the door. I was, I was shaking. I was so scared because <laughs> the, the grandpa screamed at us and said, never come back. But I, I had that feeling that I was like, I need to go. It's like, okay, I'll go. And so we, we knocked on the door and the mom happened to just come to the door. And she's like, you know what? We don't have time. We're really busy. And, and I, I remember saying, you know, this is, this is the last time I'll, I'll probably ever see you again. You know, I'm getting transferred out of this area tomorrow morning. And I wanted to come and thank you for everything you did for me and for my companion and for allowing us to share the gospel with your daughters. And she said, come back tonight and we'll, we'll all say goodbye. And so I, you know, we, we went back later that night. And I remember having a conversation very specifically with, with the mom. And we, had, we actually had an experience beforehand. Um, about a few weeks before, we were just driving past and we stopped at their house. And the mom was praying for help. And she looked out the window and saw us and she came out and, and told us that, you know, she was ready to make change and she knew that it was true too, even though we hadn't really taught her any lessons. <laughs> um, but after we taught her that day, she texted us and said she wasn't interested. And so flash forward to the time when I was saying goodbye to her family. Um, I remember inviting her right before I left that the next time the missionaries came by and, and taught her the gospel that she would accept it and she would read the Book of Mormon, and she let the missionaries into her house. And I didn't think very much of that promise, but she accepted, and I was transferred. And a year later, I got got on my email, and I remember signing in, and I very first read an email from my mom. And this email was telling me about one of my friends who 
had passed away while I was on my mission. And it was really, really hard. I remember just having an overwhelming, you know, feel, I had overwhelming feelings come to me. And I remember just sitting in there, you know, with tears in my eyes reading the email because I had known this friend for, you know, my whole life. And it was a really hard experience for me. But shortly thereafter, I, I kept on going through my emails and I saw an email from this email that I, I didn't recognize. And I opened it up and it was the mother that we had taught and the, the mother of the three daughters that we had taught. And she said, Elder Reese, I want to thank you. My three daughters and I have been meeting with the missionaries and this Saturday we will all be baptized. And I remember at that time, I just, you know, just, just learning that my friend had, had passed away but also hearing about a family that had accepted the gospel that was, that was going to be baptized. It was, it was one of the most spiritual experiences, just sitting in the email or the internet cafe that day, the, the music was blasting. <laughs> um, but the experiences and the feelings that I had, I'll, I don't think I'll ever forget that family was, was there baptized and greater or even more part of their family was baptized and they're still active to this day. And for me, that was one of the greatest experiences and the, the happiest experiences of my entire mission. Well, if anyone knew me before the mission, <laughs> I, was a, I was a really, really shy person. Um, I was really afraid to, to go up to random people and talk to them. But I do, when I do have friends, I'm not afraid to talk to them. And on the mission, we were required to talk to every single person that we saw. And so at first it was really hard for me to get out of my shell and <laughs> to go and, you know, cross the street on our bikes or just pull over the car and run out and talk to someone. Um, but I feel on my mission through obedience, I was able to overcome my fear of <laughs> talking to other people and getting out of my shell. One Sunday we came to church and a member had called us and told us that he was going to bring a non-member. And so we showed up, we were really, really excited. And I remember we tried to sit by him, but it didn't work out because just where they were sitting, there wasn't any room. But I remember walking into church and seeing this man who had a full on mohawk and he had a bunch of tattoos all over his neck and on his hands and he had gauges in his ears, he had a full beard. And so, you know, being missionaries and looking at this man, like we never ever expected him to change. And we went, at, we went up to him after church and we, we started talking to him and we invited him to have the missionary discussions. Now, unfortunately he declined and he said, you know, I'll, I'll come with my friend, but we'll just take this slow and just however, or whenever he goes to something like I'll come. And so later that week we got a call from the member. He said, hey, we're going to the visitor center. Now this is when I was serving in Hamilton in Temple View, right, right by the temple. And so we went to the visitor center that night with him and we put on the Jesus Christ or the Christus statue recording. And I remember we were sitting there and right when it, it turned on, he, he started crying. And he, that, that crying continued for the whole 45 minutes to an hour that we were teaching him. And he said, you know, I know that this is true and I feel like I need to serve a mission. And he wasn't even a member of the church then. And you know, I was like, okay, like we've got a long ways to go before then, you know, but he, he knew it was true. And we set a date for him to be baptized that night, which happened to be, you know, just three weeks later from that time or two week, two and a half weeks later from that time. And his progression in the gospel was so fast. He knew it was true. He prayed. He got a witness of the book of Mormon. He read the scriptures. He kept all of his commitments and he was baptized. And you know, unfortunately, he was actually outside of our area. And so we didn't get a follow up with him all the time, but we were able to share those first few discussions with him. And we were there for his baptism. And, you know, I, I hadn't really kept contact with him since being home for my mission. I've been home for about a year and a month and two weeks. <laughs> and yeah, I, got a, I got an email a few weeks or a few months ago and said he got his mission call. And he was called to Cambodia, where he's from. And he was leaving in or towards the end of September. And so just two weeks ago, you know, this, this convert who we'd walked into church, seen with tattoos, gauges, mohawk, beard, <laughs> who I never thought would change. I remember I went to the temple and we did an endowment session together. And to see 
the individual that he was before and to see the individual that he had become after he had applied the gospel in his life was two completely different people. It was an experience of a lifetime that I'll never forget. You know, in this, I was talking to him. There was actually, there was two individuals that we were talking to that day that were going to the same mission. And so I was talking to, his name's Tra. I was talking to Tra about his mission, about what he was excited for. And then this other young man who had just graduated high school. And, you know, I asked this other, this other young man who graduated from high school, you know, what are you most excited for? What are, what are you looking forward to on your mission? And he said, you know, I'm, I have descendants from Cambodia, and so I'm really excited, you know, to go and see where my family's from. And that's a great reason. You know, he, he was really excited to serve a mission. I could tell that he loved the gospel. But then I went and I talked to Tra. And I said, Tra, what are you most excited for? And instantly he said, it's not about me. It never was and it never is. And it never, never will be. He said, it's about the Lord and about what I can give and what I can do for Him. And when he said that, it really, it really, really hit me because here was this man who had never, ever thought of even serving a mission, you know, just a few years later. And now here he was giving everything he had to the Lord. And if I had any advice to anyone that was going to serve a mission or anybody on a mission, when you give everything you have to the Lord, and you give all of your desires, all your dreams, all your, <laughs> all your personal things to the Lord. He'll take you and make you into a completely new person. I saw that on my mission as I served. And I saw that as Tra was just about to leave on his mission. But it is an amazing experience that I'll never forget.